In the fourth video, we're going to go through actually solving a problem, implementing it and solving it in a tool called Pyomo, which is built into the Python um, language. So we have a simple two-dimensional problem that we've been working with. Uh, this problem has two variables, uh, x1 and x2, x2, and it has three constraints. Um, and so we're going to seek to maximize an objective, which we're calling z. Um, and that objective, graphically, we can see it naturally wants to uh, push us to the, the topmost point at the intersection of two of these constraints. So what the goal of this video is to go through how we actually take this mathematical representation of a model and put it into a programming language and solve it. So let's move over to an actual programming environment where we can implement this. I'm using VS Code, and VS Code is a, a free uh, open source development environment that you can use to host a, a number of different languages. Python is one of those. Um, I will assume at this point that you have uh, VS Code and Python installed. Um, if you don't or don't know how to do that, uh, I can direct you to a, a page of resources that I've put together on my lab website. Um, you can see here the lab is uh, esolab at .engr.wisc.edu slash resources. And then in this list, there are a number of different things that you might find helpful. Uh, one of those is, is VS Code installation and configuration. Um, so you can do that and get Python set up. Uh, and then we're going to need to also set up um, some solvers, which we'll come back to here. Okay, so this is VS Code. Um, you can see the way that it's set up. There's a main window, there's a, a sidebar that has operations, files, uh, apps, things like that. There's a terminal in the bottom, uh, and there's the main editor. On the right-hand side, there's uh, tools for quickly scrolling and navigating your, your code. So what we're doing here is writing out Python code um, using uh, this Pyomo toolkit. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have Pyomo installed. Um, so Pyomo is a package that goes along with Python that lets you formulate and solve these models in a in kind of a repeatable or systematic way. So you need to uh, get Pyomo installed. So let's look back at how to do that. And if you go there, you'll see that there is a procedure on how you actually go about getting it all installed. Uh, but one thing to point out is that you have both the Pyomo installation that's needed, but you also need solvers, right? So Pyomo is just a, a toolkit for formulating the problem. The solvers are actually what takes the problem and identifies an optimal solution. Um, there's two solvers that I've uh, had some success using. Uh, one is called CBC, uh, and it's maintained by the CoinOr project. Uh, and so you can go through the instructions here. This is a free solver. Um, so free solvers tend to not be as good as commercial solvers, but this definitely will do the job for most of the problems that you're going to want to deal with. As you get um, more complicated formulations or uh, really large scale problems, then you probably are going to want to go to a commercial solver. A uh, commercial solver, for example, would be something like Garobi. So Garobi is uh, used for linear problems, for mixed integer problems, uh, for nonlinear problems. It's a general purpose solver, um, but it does a really good job uh, for this class of, um, uh, of problem. One complication with Garobi is that it is a commercial product. So if you're an academic um, like myself, you can get a free license of limited, uh, some, some limitations on that, but you can get it for free and download it and install it on your computer. Um, if you're not a, a university, if you're a national lab or industry, um, you will have to buy a license for that. And the licenses aren't necessarily uh, that cheap, but uh, it's something that you know is, is often a, a very good investment if you're solving difficult problems that have a, a sort of important implications for your business model. Okay, so, so that's how you go about installing that. So again, let's go back to our, our problem. Uh, remembering that we're trying to solve this for these three constraints, and let's look how we do this in Pyomo. So the first thing we do is uh, we will implement, uh, we will import the Pyomo package. The way to do this is we're going to import the Pyomo.environ uh, or Pyomo environment uh, module, and just as a short a shorthand, rather than calling it Pyomo.environ every time, 
let's just say let's import it as Pyomo. So hereafter we just refer to this as Pyomo. All right, the, the next thing we're going to do is create a, a Pyomo model. And this is mostly just the framework that, that Pyomo needs. It's a, a container for the data for all the constraints and variables that you set up. Um, and so we set it up by initially declaring this model uh, using the concrete model method. There are different types of models that Pyomo supplies. Um, I've had the most luck using the concrete model, but there's more documentation uh, on uh, what the different modeling options are in the, uh, in the Pyomo documentation. Okay, so we now have a model, and to this model we need to make some modifications or, or make some additions based on our actual problem. So if you recall, our, our simple example has two variables, x1 and x2. So the way that Pyomo models work is you create attributes. Uh, and those attributes have to be of a certain type. Um, so for example, here we're creating an attribute and I'm calling this attribute x1. I could call this anything I want. I could say model dot, you know, my variable name, whatever I want it to be. But the important thing is that that attribute is assigned a special type of structure. And that is, in the case of a variable, it's going to be the pyomo.var uh, data type. So here we're putting in a, a variable called x1. And then we need to tell pyomo something about what this variable is supposed to be. Is it a continuous variable? Is it a real uh, or integer variable? Is it um, a discrete variable? Whatever. So we can specify something about the domain, and Pyromo will automatically provide uh, you know, the necessary constraints that go along with the, the domain that you specify. So here we're saying it's Pyromo.nonnegative reals. That means Pyromo is going to enforce a non-negativity constraint on any uh, variable created in, in this way. If we said that this was an integer variable, then it would be requiring that the, the values take on integer, uh, or the variables take on only integer values. So we do this for x1 and x2. Those were the two variables we have. Um, and now Pyomo is aware that we're trying to uh, manipulate two different variables. All right, the next thing we're going to do is add constraints to our model. So let's look back uh, quickly at, at our list of constraints. We have uh, one, two, three constraints, and they're both in terms of x1 and x2 with a constant. On them. So there's a, a number of different ways to add constraints in Pyomo. Um, one option, uh, usually for pretty simple constraints or easily typed constraints, is uh, something called a constraint list. So I'm going to create a new attribute called model.c. Uh, model.c is of type Pyomo constraint list, and this now tells uh, Python or Pyomo, that I'm going to uh, associate this constraint list with this, this name C and manipulate it as such. So after I create this constraint list, there's a method of the constraint list called add. So I can go through and add expressions for each constraint that I want to include. Okay, so this is, this is one way of doing it. We'll come back later and show, let's say if there's uh, more complex um, constraint uh, definitions that you want to deal with, you know, maybe you have initial conditions or things, you can uh, do a, a different approach by def defining a function and then adding the function to the constraint. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that later in a later example, but for now this is going to be uh, good enough for what we need. Now there's a couple important things to point out uh, in, when it comes to writing constraints. So the first thing is that model.x1, right, that's a variable that we've already defined, so we have to have already defined the variable above in order for Pyramid to know what it is we're, we're working with here. Um, we have constant values. Here I've just hard programmed numerical values. You may want to include a uh, variable or um, you know, named constants that, that are part of these constraints. And then the really core thing here is that you're, you're uh, ex writing an expression that is that evaluates to a true or false statement. So here we have, you know, for, for example, this constraint by saying this left-hand side is greater than or equal to this right-hand side. When Pyomo is evaluating this expression, 
the result of this expression is a true or false uh, categorization. So whatever you're doing, it has to be evaluated as a true or false. Um, Pyom is also smart enough to know, or the solvers are smart enough to know, that if you write a constraint that's not actually a linear equation, um, it won't be able to process that. Right? It'll go through. It'll go through starting to solve the model, and as it's evaluating it, it'll detect that it's not a linear expression, um, and it will fail. It'll it'll complain to you. Um, so those are some things to keep in mind.